Welcome to History Class with Dr. W, and welcome to this course on American cultural history. In this preliminary lecture, we're going to be talking about some of the themes and big ideas that we'll be talking about in this course, and in particular, think a little bit about what is meant by the very word culture, and what is meant by cultural history. What kinds of things are we going to be talking about and studying during this course? For most of human existence, the study of history has focused on the study of great men, the study of wars and politics. While it's a cliché that history is written by the victors, as with most clichés, there's at least an element of truth. History, until a few decades ago, was largely written by and about white men. Before the 1960s, a few writers, and even fewer scholars, bucked that trend, but usually to little fanfare. With the advent of the 60s and the Vietnam War, the civil rights movement, the feminist movement, and many other similar social movements, historians began to challenge traditional interpretations. The emphasis on white men and on politics and war was challenged as historians expanded their study to minority groups such as African Americans and women and to new fields such as social history, economic history, labor history, the study of religion, and the study of culture. Such historians recognized that the story of human existence involves more than just wars and great men making decisions. Our story involves many more day-to-day -day concerns. How do average people make a living? What do they do with their time? What are they thinking about? How do they get along with each other? And how have all of these matters changed over time? Consider your own lives and how people in the future might think about this era. While clearly we live in a turbulent and important political time, our day-to-day -day lives involve much more than whatever is happening in Washington. These days, of course, we worry about the pandemic. Think about how much that has affected our daily lives. But how could historians of the future understand our lives without addressing things like Twitter, Facebook, or TikTok? Should they neglect thinking about the importance of college football or the NFL or other sports in our daily lives? The music we listen to, the things we watch on television, the places we go for vacation, all of these make up the fabric of our lives. And in short, this is cultural history. Culture itself is a tricky word with many definitions and interpretations. So let's explore a little bit more deeply what is meant by the word culture. The author of one of your course textbooks, Eric Avila, who wrote American Cultural History, a very short introduction, describes cultural history as the history of stories, their origins, transmission, and significance in time. Anthropologist Franz Boas described culture as the ways people inhabiting a common geographic area do things, the ways they think and feel about things. Others have described it as the totality of ideas in a society, popular as well as scholarly, low as well as high culture. Thus, culture envelops much of the human existence, and there are many other ways of thinking about it. In this class, we will talk about popular culture, which might be addressed as a variety of activities primarily intended to entertain or distract. We will also address, at times, high culture, which is more oriented towards an artistic or intellectual experience, and low culture, the less intellectual pursuits of the masses. So what are some examples of culture? What kinds of things will we be studying in this course? Well, again, the course in some ways will focus on popular culture, things like theater and film, music and television, vaudeville and radio, among many others. But we'll also talk about high culture at times, including the arts, literature, opera, theater, museums, and many others. Or mass culture or low culture, things like sports, travel, and recreation. We want to remind ourselves that in this course we're going to be concentrating on cultural history as 
a scholarly pursuit. One of the things that's fun about cultural history is that it focuses on many things that uh, can be fun and entertaining and that a lot of us pursue uh, as pastimes and recreation. Uh, so it's easy when studying cultural history to stray into trivial or inconsequential things. The John Wayne movie buff is not a scholar. The fan who can recount every starting lineup in the history of Clemson football is not a historian. And knowing the lyrics of every Beatles song doesn't really add to our understanding of history. And yet, the line between the trivial and the significant is often blurry. One man's trivia is another man's subject of great importance. So, while we're going to be focusing on studying cultural history in a scholarly way, we can't also be too quick to dismiss certain topics as merely trivial or unimportant. Again, just as a reminder, the entirety of what we're studying in this course was once considered completely unimportant by scholars. And now, of course, much of it is deemed very important. In general, the study of culture achieves its greatest significance when it enhances our understanding of the human condition more broadly, when it connects with and incorporates other historical themes. The history of baseball is interesting in many elements, but one could argue that its most important moment came when Jackie Robinson broke the Major League Baseball color barrier by taking the field for the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1947, a moment that transcended sport alone and became a touchstone for moving forward racial equality in the whole country. There are many fun and exciting moments in the history of film, but clearly some movies transcend beyond simple entertainment. Stanley Kubrick's classic, Dr. Strangelove, for instance, captures many of the fears and ironies of nuclear weapons and the Cold War in what is also a funny and entertaining film. It's probably impossible to teach a cultural history course without straying into the trivial, at least some of the time. Again, one man's trivia may be very important to someone else. And what fun would it be if we didn't engage with the trivial, at least sometimes? In general, though, we will try in this course to focus on cultural elements that also help us understand bigger themes in human history. Race, gender, politics, religion, patriotism and yes, even war and peace. Other important themes involve the connections between culture and power, culture and identity, and culture and nationalism, among others. Is culture, as some have argued, an opiate of the masses, intended to distract and weaken the minds of the people while those in power run amok? Or is culture a source of empowerment, connection, and identity for those masses? who can thus become more powerful in demanding and achieving greater rights and independence? Does culture reinforce or does it challenge the predominant racial and ethnic identity of a nation, in this case, white males? How can culture shape or reshape such identity? And how does culture reflect our national origins and our nation's future? Culture in the United States has been influenced by other cultures from all over the world as both a feature of our own immigrant heritage and our standing as a colonial power. At the same time, we have exported our own culture, both intentionally and inadvertently, in an attempt to sway those in other parts of the world to support our way of living. Historians of the Cold War, for instance, correctly note that Blue Jeans and Billy Joel and a host of other cultural imports from the West contributed in a real way to the fall of communism. Our course will focus on culture in the modern era, beginning in the so-called Gilded Age, the decades following the Civil War. A revolution in transportation and technology allowed for an explosion of culture on many fronts. The growth of cities contributed to the rise of mass entertainment, such as sports and theater. Improved technology allowed for the rapid spread of ideas and media such as the penny press, movies, and eventually radio. And the influx of millions of immigrants introduced both a vast array of international cultural traditions, such as food, stories, and activities, and at the same time 
inspired a white backlash from the dominant class. So we will focus in this course on culture in the Gilded Age and beyond. We'll begin, however, with a brief lecture discussing culture prior to that period. And that is where our next lecture begins.